untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green creature combo deck titled Golden Growth, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and it's a deck built around Exponential Growth. The Sorcery Speed Pump Spell from Strixhaven costs double X and double green, and then until end of turn, double target creature's power X times. So if we cast this for X equals 1, it's gonna cost 4 mana total to double a creature's power. If we cast it for X equals 2, it's gonna cost 6 mana total, and then we can double a creature's power twice, and that's when interesting things start to happen. And which creature are we going to target with Exponential Growth? That's going to be Goldspan Dragon, the 5 mana 4 4 dragon with flying and haste. And when a dragon attacks or becomes a target of a spell, we create a treasure token, which we can sacrifice for 2 mana instead of just 1 while the Goldspan Dragon is in play. So the goal of the deck is to get a Goldspan Dragon in play, attack the opponent for 4, put them to 16, and then on the following turn, cast Exponential Growth for X equals 2, thanks to those treasure tokens generated by the Goldspan Dragon. That's usually not too difficult. And then we can grow the goldspan up to a 16 power to goldspan dragon and finish off the opponent. So that's what our deck is trying to accomplish. And we can even set up a turn 4 kill thanks to Transmogrify, which is another way to consistently find our goldspan dragon. A sorcery that exiles target creature and that creature's controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card and put that card onto the battlefield. And the only creature in our deck is goldspan dragon. So if we can target a creature token with our transmogrify we're guaranteed to find goldspan dragon and our deck is playing with four copies of emergent sequence from strixhaven the two mana ram spell that lets us search for a basic land card put it on the battlefield tapped and then it becomes a zero zero green and blue fractal creature token that's still a land and we put a plus one plus one counter on it for each land we had entered the battlefield under our control this turn so if we cast a turn two emergent sequence turn three thanks to the mana generated by emergent sequence we can cast transmogrify which now has a target thanks to our land also being a creature. We search up a goldspan dragon, hit the opponent for 4, and then on turn 4, thanks to the treasure, we can cast exponential growth for x equals 2 to finish off the opponent. So that's our game plan, and then we also have some additional redundancy built in with other pump spells and protection spells. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we've got the full playset of Satyr's Cunning, a 1 mana sorcery that creates a 1-1 one, one red Satyr creature token that cannot block, can also be escaped out of the graveyard for 200 red by exiling 2 other cards. And the goal of Satyr's Cunning is just to provide us with a cheap creature token that we can then target with our Transmogrify in case we don't draw Emergent Sequence. Then we also have the full play set of Snakeskin Veil. This is very important to protect our Goldspan Dragon. A one man instant that puts a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control, and it also gains hexproof until end of turn. And if the opponent is trying to target our Goldspan Dragon with a spot removal spell, the Goldspan Dragon's ability is going to trigger, give us a treasure token, which we can then use to cast our Snakeskin Veil even if we're tapped out, to then protect our dragon and to generate an additional treasure token. Then at 2 mana, we've got our full playset of Thrill of Possibility, an instant that as an additional cost to cast, we have to discard a card to draw 2. This just helps us smooth out our draws. Sometimes we draw multiple copies of Goldspan Dragon and no pump spells. Sometimes we draw too many pump spells and no Transmogrify or Goldspan Dragon. Just helps us smooth out our draws. Can also discard our Satyr's Cunning and later escape it out of the graveyard, so we don't have to feel too bad about it. Then we also have the full playset of Unleash Fury. This is sort of like Exponential Growth. It's much cheaper for 2 mana and it's also an instant so we can attack with our Goldspan Dragon, generate a treasure and still cast the Unleash Fury in the middle of combat. But of course this only doubles target creature's power once until end of turn, so it's not going to have the same effect as a single Exponential Growth. And then we've got our full playset of Emergent Sequence to help us ramp and give us a target for Transmogrify. And also the full playset of Wolfhello Haven as an additional ramp card that's much less susceptible to removal that can still help us ramp into our Goldspan Dragon ahead of schedule if we're not setting up our Transmogrify. Then at 3 mana we also have two copies of Kazul's Fury, which we can play as a tap land, or as a 3 mana instant, that as an additional cost to cast we have to sacrifice a creature, and then Kazul's Fury deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target. So this can be useful if the opponent has some chum blocking flyers, like maybe they've got an active Clarion Spirit that's making spirit tokens to get in front of our Goldspan Dragon, then it's useful to have Kazul's Fury as an alternate win condition to combo with our exponential growth, and the fact that of course we get a treasure token when 
when we cast Growth on our Gold Span, usually means we'll have the mana to cast our Kazul's Fury afterwards. Another approach is to add some Trample to the deck, like play the new 1 mana Charge through from Strixhaven, which can target one of our creatures and give it Trample until end of turn and also draws a card, so even has some synergy with Gold Span Dragon. Or we could play Crash through as a 1 mana Sorcery that gives our creatures Trample and doesn't target anything, so we can also cast it early on, so those are options as well. And then we've got our full play set of Transmogrify, which in a pinch you could also use as removal for the opponent's creatures, but there's always the risk that you reveal something scarier afterwards. And then we've got our four copies of Goldspan Dragon and Exponential Growth. And then the mana base includes two copies of Kazul's Fury, as well as four copies of Temple of Abandon, which comes into play tapped and lets us cry one, although we're not doing much on turn one anyway, so it's useful to help us assemble the various combo pieces. And then four of the red-green pathway, eight forests and six mountains. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hands, not amazing, but probably keepable. If we find Transmogrify, we can get Dragon in play even sooner, but for now, the plan is just to ramp into it with the Emergence Sequence. And there's Transmogrify, so I wouldn't mind an extra untapped land. So turn 2, we'll go for Emergence Sequence. If that works, we can already Transmogrify on the following turn. Opponent on a red-black Sacrifice deck with Eye Twitch. Let's see if this works. And then hopefully I twitch attacks so we can get in for four. Passion of Remembrance, that's fine. Alright, we get to Transmogrify. Now we don't have a growth in hand to necessarily kill the opponent next turn. But getting a gold span in play is still pretty good here. And then we'll hang on to the Satyr's Cunning. Crocs are gonna make us discard. We'll get rid of the Satyr's Cunning. And take one. Opponent can jump with Eye Twitch, maybe sacrifice it to a Village Rites. Another Transmogrify. Just cast another Gold Span here. And then no real need to Kazul's Fury yet. But maybe if the opponent tries to kill our gold span next turn. And there's a village rights. Opponent's also gaining life with Bastion, so it's gonna be a bit more difficult to finish them off. Humes exiles Goldspan, we get a token, and we get to Kazul's Fury. Bones at 10. We've got another Goldspan coming in. So any pump spell can close out the game for us. And let's see. Do I have enough mana to escape Satyr's Cunning? Targeted with Transmogrify and cast Goldspan? No. So we're gonna keep that play for next turn. So probably no real reason to escape now. This is 8 mana. I guess we could escape and Transmogrify to play around another discard effect like Croxa. Don't think the opponent's playing any sweepers. And that's our final gold span dragon. Alright. Bones at two. Let's see if they can find a way out. Didn't think the opponent's playing any sweepers, otherwise we could have played around those by holding the Satyr's Cunning play for next turn. But our opponent packs it in. Sweet, onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand could use a bit of ramp to get the gold span and play a turn sooner. But we've got uh, exponential growth to go with it, so we'll try it. 
And then we might have to thrill to find a ramp card. Because if we can go turn 4 gold span and then turn 5 exponential growth, that's probably good enough. Especially if we can hang on to Snakeskin Veil for protection. So, I'm thinking we discard a land here. Although it's not without risk. Just spare Sentinels or point on a red green. I see maybe party deck. Sentinel does have reach, so that could be annoying. I think we still thrill and then maybe discard Snakeskin Veil since I don't expect my opponent to have a ton of removal. Alright, we did not find a ramp card, but we did find a Kazul's Fury, which could come in handy. Alright, so this is just a Winota deck. Yeah, if they have a Winota next turn, we could already be dead. Opponents gonna cast a Volokut Awakening to help them find a Winota. So they didn't have one in hand. It's gonna be another Gilded Goose into Selfless Savior. So yeah, the Kazul's Fury is going to be important to get past all these flyers and reach creatures. Another Sentinel. And another Goose. Alright, opponents empty-handed. If they top deck Quinota, we're in trouble. If not, they're not really dealing a lot of damage here. Could still cast Thrill, probably gonna hold it. Opponents took the 4 damage, of course they can also gain life with the food tokens, so... Growth for X equals 2 plus Fury isn't necessarily lethal. Another Goose, Charger, Sentinels and Savior attack. So now they don't actually have the green mana to make more food, but they can of course still sacrifice ones that are essentially at 19. So, yeah, we could Exponential Growth and Kazul's Fury, but then only deal 16 damage. So I guess we attack first. If they take it, we can kill them with the Fury. And we also make an extra treasure, which represents an extra pump with growth. So now... But I'm gonna make Goose indestructible. That's fine. So we can exponential growth for one, two, three. And then still Kazul's Fury since we'll make a treasure afterwards, so that should work. Thirty-two. Kazul's Fury. And that's game. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand's got Satyrs cutting into Trismogrify, and then Veil for protection, so yeah, I don't mind it. Not as fast as Emergence Sequence into Trismogrify. And then, do I want a Mountain? Sort of, yeah. Do need land for to cast Transmogrify. And then we'll scry. Emergence sequence, probably not necessary. Turn on forest, I don't expect my Seder token to die. And then we're looking for exponential growth to combine with our dragon. Red green, of course, could have a stomp for the Seder. But we do have Snakeskin Veil for protection now. So we'll pass. Our opponent cycles Yidara Wandering Monster instead. Okay. And cast a Cultivate, so we'll get to Transmogrify. Find a Goldspan Dragon. 
and we can protect it. Five mana for the opponents. For a Quartzwood Crasher, okay. Untap. So we've got a few options. Um, I could double Snakeskin Veil my Gold Span, which essentially adds one mana each time. Also lets me escape Satyr's Cunning and cast another Transmogrify to get a second Dragon. And then we attack for 10, put him to 5. That seems reasonable. Or I could hang on to one Snakeskin Veil as protection. So I can escape the cunning and still transmogrify here. And then might as well cast a haven too. Wins at 6, and we have a Snakeskin Veil for protection in case they try and kill one of our dragons. So, don't mind my position. Opponent's gonna have to one-hit KOS as well. Gem Racer just cast, it does have reach, so it can get in front of a dragon. Take 6, and our opponent does generate a 6-6 six, six Dinosaur Beasts. So, if our opponent blocks our 4 4 dragon, we can kill them by pumping the unblocked gold span. If they block the 5 5, then they can survive. But I think we gotta turn our creature sideways and hope for the best. They block the 5 5, so they only take 4. And yeah, our Satyr's Cunning cannot block. So we're taking a lethal on the way back here, is what that means. Although, I guess we can still make a wolf. So let's do that. So the wolf can maybe still keep us alive for an extra turn. Do I escape Satyr's Cunning? Might as well. Alright, so we've got a 2-2 on defense. Is it enough to survive? Could block the forest, could block one of the tramplers. Not that it matters much, if they have a pump spell we die. And an ember cleave certainly is good enough here. Alright, the reach creature did it. We had an answer to a removal spell, but not an extra blocker. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got the turn 2 sequence into turn 3 transmogrify, so I'll keep. No pump spells to go with it at the moment. Turn 1 Eye Twitch, so a black sacrifice deck. Satyr's Cunning doesn't seem necessary. So we're looking for exponential growth, unleash fury. If they can kill my emergence sequence, then our hand gets a lot less exciting. I twitch attacks. Sir so opponent appears to be mono black. Serrated scorpion, that's fine. And there's exponential growth, alright. So we could set up a turn for kill. And at the very least, we can play a backup dragon. Dramatic finale, alright. 
Scorpion attacks, Eye Twitch stays back. So let's see here. I can cast Growth for two, but then we're one mana short of uh, Kazul's Fury winning the game. Although, of course, we can attack with the Goldspan Dragon. So I could Exponential Growth, attack, and then Kazul's Fury. So yeah, that should do it. Can even cast a Fury before they get a chance to block. Although, not that it really matters. And there we go, turn for kill, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand is missing Transmogrify or Goldspan, so I don't think we can keep. This is a little better. And then it's probably just going to be Emergence Sequence, try and ramp into Goldspan on turn 4. And then Growth on turn 5 for lethal. Scorpion, okay. Don't think we need to cast Thrill just yet. So our opponent's Black Green Sacrifice with a turn 2 Dina. Alright, we still need a land, so I'll probably have to Thrill Discarding Veil. Even though Veil could be good insurance to have. And then do it now in case we draw into a tapped land. Alright, another emergence sequence will do as well. Alright, so hopefully Goldspan survives, and then Exponential Growth can carry us to the finish line. Although they might be able to gain a bit of life, so they're above 20. 3 mana for a Sedgemore Witch. Opponents at 16. So best case scenario is they tap out for a Bastion of Remembrance. Night Twitch is annoying. So now we need a Kazul's Fury. So, yeah, Exponential Growth is not going to work. If we kill the Eye Twitch, they might be able to learn for Necrotic Fumes to kill my Dragon, and we don't have Veil for protection. Although they could sacrifice Eye Twitch with Dina either way, so might as well attack and get a treasure. And then probably no point in sending the forests. Bone on chumps. And plums sacrificing scorpion and eye twitch. Replaced by past tokens. So hopefully we can keep our goldspan dragon alive here. They learned for a pest summoning, so they're not getting necrotic fumes just yet. So there's still hope we can exponential growth them next turn. And we have access to a lot of mana. Village rights to draw. That's fine. So Heartless Act could still be bad, or the uh, Mortality Spear since they've gained life. Another Eye Twitch, yeah, that does it too. So now we need Kazul's Fury. Snakeskin Veil's good insurance. Alright, Goldspan attacks. And then... Gotta hope they run out of flying blockers at some point. So now they might get the Necrotic Fumes. Yep, but now we've got the Snakeskin Veil, so we can potentially foil their plan. Dina gonna sack a pass just to drain us. Alright, hopefully their turn is just Necrotic Fumes and no more Eye Twitches. Bastion, that's fine. Opponent probably feels pretty safe at 17 life. Scorpion's fine. 
So yeah, I think we get them here. Make a whole bunch of mana. So this is 13. So X equals 5. And that's a 128 powered Goldspan Dragon. With Snakeskin Veil backup. Just in case. Opponent can sacrifice Serrated Scorpion to gain a bit of life. Is that gonna save them? Let's find out together. Our opponents back up to 20 and back down to minus 108. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's missing something to sacrifice to transmogrify. Although we do have Thrill to help us find one of those. I'll try it. Haven for a bit of ramp. So if we draw a Satyr's Cunning or Emergence Sequence, we're in business. Opponent on blue reds, and there's Satyr's Cunning. Still gonna lead with Haven. A bit short on red mana. Might have to thrill to help us find lands. Alright, Fury we can play tapped and then play Cunning. Seems fine. And then next one we can go for Transmogrify. We've got an Unleash in hand. So, what do we want to draw here? Another Unleash, maybe Exponential Growth. At least it's likely that our Transmogrify will be successful. Especially now with Snakeskin Veil backup. So we get to attack. Still gonna hang on to Snakeskin Veil. Question is whether we want to Unleash Fury here. I think we're just gonna hit for four. Hang on to only Fury for later. Also, if we Snake Skin Veil first and then only Fury, we get in a bit more damage. Interation is gonna grow the Sprite Dragon, so. Yeah, the opponent could just try and block our Gold Span. Especially if they can make them 3-3s, three they're gonna be successful. And then Snake Skin Veil is not necessarily enough. Although we could use Unleash Fury just to trade for both dragons and then hopefully find another gold span a bit later. Opponents attacking. We'll take it. Don't think we cast Thrill since both pump spells are still useful. Although now I could Thrill discarding Mountain in the hopes of finding something more exciting. Another Snakeskin Veil. So if I double Veil up to 6, 12, not quite lethal, but it could be next turn. So we'll attack. Escape a Cunning. Alrighty, so opponent still at 14. They might not be expecting to die next turn. Although, could be the case. Another iteration. So, is your opponent going to stay back to try and play a longer game? Or are they going to try and race? Because on the board, you know, if we didn't have any pump spells, he could easily kill us before the goal span deals the remaining 14 points. So that works. Could be that to a shock. Yeah, I think shock does it here, sadly. 
That's Xaxis. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one, Satyr's Cunning. Turn two, Haven. Turn three, Transmogrify. So, Haven and Cunning kind of doing the same work as the Emergence Sequence. Although, maybe a little bit less susceptible to removal since people are less inclined to kill a Satyr token than a land. And I will go for the Haven over Emergence Sequence here. Sack for one. Put on Black Reds, Hunt for Specimens. So this is the Mardu Sacrifice deck. And don't mind casting Sequence now. So we've got another target for the next Transmogrify. Although we could also escape Seder Scunning potentially. Ghost Strider. Okay, so next turn they can maybe steal one of my creatures and sacrifice it to the Strider. Unleash Fury, nice. So. I can transmogrify the land. I guess play Haven first. Get another gold span. And we can unleash Fury one of them. So not quite lethal, but still pretty decent here. Bones at three, and we'll escape a Satyr's Cunning, why not? Alright, so our opponent needs something pretty special here to get out of this mess. Gonna start by sacking a goat. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand is missing Transmogrifier or Goldspan, so we'll have to mulligan. Okay, this is better. So definitely keeping sequence to lands Transmogrify. And then the question is what card to get rid of? Probably keep Kazul's Fury, since at the very least it's still a land. So between Thrill and the Gold Spam, probably get rid of Thrill. And then probably don't need a second Gold Spam. So if they can answer Sequence, we're in a bit of trouble. And won't necessarily be able to Transmogrify since our land comes into play tapped. Alright, never mind. Still need an untapped plan for exponential growth to be lethal next turn. Also, let's see, we could growth for x equals 1. And then I guess we can still Kazul's Fury to finish them off if they have nothing. Or we could do it for 2. Or we could cast another Goldspan Dragon, which is better in case they have a counterspell. So yeah, if they have nothing, we can kill them by just casting growth for x equals 2. Um, if they have a counter spell, growth for 2 is still fine. If they have a bound spell, which is less likely, then I would prefer to just play another dragon. Yeah, I think we just play another dragon here. Alright, opponent did have the bound spell, so glad we did it this way. And then do I play another gold span now? I think I do. Plays around a counter spell better. 
even though it doesn't set up an exciting exponential growth like we could by keeping the treasures. But growth for one still going to be pretty strong here. Or I could just attack and then Kazul's Fury to finish them off. If I exponential growth and they have another Brazen Borber to bounce, how bad is it? It's not that bad, we're still hitting them for four. And we generate a treasure, so... It's not that much of a setback in terms of mana. Alright, we'll move to combats. And as soon as we get to make a treasure, we can cast Kazul's Fury. And they're gonna borrow her in response. So I could Kazul's Fury deal 8. If they have a counter spell, it's unfortunate. If they have a bounce spell, they can bounce my other dragon, but they're still at 4. So this is a way I could lose if we Kazul's Fury. They counter the Fury. I deal 4, and then they have a way to deal with my dragon. So close call. Given that we have another exponential growth in hand, I think we just let this happen. And then attack. And probably replay dragon second main. Could also exponential growth for one. Double my gold span and then Kazul's Fury afterwards. But that still loses to the same things we were afraid of earlier. Yeah, not sure what the foretold card could be. Can just replay Dragon, although... Yeah, I guess we'll wait. Opponent just cast a Behold, so that was a foretold card. Decided to wait, since casting Dragon now would waste the treasure. And even if they deal with Gold Span, we can still play this and then have access to a bunch of mana afterwards. Elder Gargroth. Okay, so now we can kill them with the Kazul's Fury. So we played a little bit more conservatively than we should have, maybe, but... And then we can cast Exponential Growth for the max amount, since we'll still be able to attack. So X equals 4. Attack. And Kazul's Fury. Alright, sweet. So yeah, Goldspan Dragon is one powerful card, and this deck can potentially cheat it and play on turn 3, which makes it even better. And then the extra mana definitely comes in handy with Exponential Growth. So yeah, overall, Golden Growth, a fun and relatively powerful deck in standard if you're in the market for Goldspan Dragons and Pump Spells. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.